Hey there, YouTube. Eric Carthage here. I'm going to bring you on a little bit of an adventure. This is actually a live commentary on a 2v2 siege battle on the Shinjo map. Um, so I just want to show you the opening screen so you can see all the people's names. And uh, I'll come back when we get on the battle map. Alright, now we're just waiting for other players to load in. Um, you can actually see down here in the bottom left that Patchy is in his armor. I will explain that when I get a chance. Uh, what I like to do when I start off is I like to take a look at the mini-map, get a lay of the land, um, get a little bit of a feel for how we might use the terrain to our advantage. I mean, obviously there's a moat. This side has a lot of land in front of it, so that means my men wouldn't have to fight from within the water. Plus there's a gate right there, so that might be handy. Uh, there's woods here where I could hide some troops, but they'd still have to get across the water, so I don't know how much that would help. Let's take a look at what my, um what my teammate has brought. He's a 10 star, which is good, because hopefully his leader will be very good. I've actually changed Patchy up a little bit. Um, check him out. Here he is in his full armor. Um, well, let me get you a better view of it. There is Patchy in his armor. Uh, and some of you may be wondering how I got that again. I'll explain it later. I've only got 50 seconds to, uh, to set up the battle. Um, I'm actually going to deploy all of my troops on the other side over here just so that we um just so we can uh, take the castle from both sides I've only got 30 seconds left I need to send a message to my opponent as well um, in just a moment get all my units over here I've only got a few seconds left okay all my troops are over here and the reason I'm doing this is because I want my troops uh, to be on the opposite side of the castle, this will help split our opponents. At least, I mean, I hope this is going to be a good strategy. I actually don't really have the best angle on that castle with my mangonel right there. Which kind of sucks. It's going to be kind of limited as to what I can do. That was actually kind of a poor choice of placement for me. Um, but, fortunately for me, uh, there's some matchlock samurai garrisoned here. And, um, you know, those definitely do make a tempting target. There's more matchlock samurai outside the castle. So it looks like our opponents have just gone heavy on missile troops. I kind of think that's a mistake. Uh, my opponent came, or my teammate has come extremely missile heavy. He's got, um, looks like five bow warrior monks and three matchlock monks. And then here's his avatar. And again, I said uh, he's a rank 10 general. There is a little bit of lag in this game, so uh, sorry for that. But I wanted to show it to you live. Uh, I do have my mangonel on fire at will. That was a huge mistake. Um, I didn't notice that. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't really want to target these matchlock samurai because I can outrange them with my bows. So I am going to target the gate and simply burn this gate down. And then my next target would be that tower over there. That way we can reduce the uh, defenses of this fort. It looks like there's some bow samurai exiting the fort. Uh, I do need to go ahead and march my bows up. And uh, let's, let's get within range to fire. I'm going to move my infantry up behind. And I'm going to keep Patchy close to, to my army. Now, um, oh, I just got a good hit. Holy crap. I just got a really lucky shot on these post samurai and killed like half of them. Dude, check that out. Just absolutely wasted on those guys. Wow, that was fortunate. Alright, so my fire projecting mangonel has taken down the gate. I'm now going to see if I can take out this tower. It doesn't fire a ton of arrows, but it does fire arrows. I kind of think our opponents are screwed. Um, if you remember my discussion about matchlock units, I really think they're just better in dual tiered forts. It's because there's nothing here to force me within range of uh, the opposing matchlock units. Uh, it looks like over here though, uh, this opponent was thinking of facing off with this army out on open ground. Now one thing you could do on a fort battle to catch your opponents off guard is maybe bring a bunch of cavalry because they wouldn't be expecting it and you can place it without the fort and um, you'll notice that my opponent and I neither one brought any spear or cavalry troops and we would have been extremely vulnerable uh, to a cavalry spam uh, th this guy um, is, has come outside of the fort to commit to a bow fight this was just utterly stupid uh, he's not in loose formation um, his men are walking right into a freaking mass of bow warrior monks um, yeah just I'm, I'm not trying to be mean to my opponent but I, I'm sorry that was completely and utterly stupid um, yeah, really stupid. Uh, I, I, I'm going to get the missile fight started. I don't think this battle is going to be very long. I was kind of hoping for this to be kind of a, an epic battle, but 
our opponents are making some pretty grave mistakes. Uh, maybe you'll be able to learn something. Some of you wanted to see me using siege equipment. That was the main reason why I did this battle. So here you can see uh, the uh, shots from my siege equipment coming in. Actually, you couldn't really. But there's the effects of it. Kind of just a cinematic view for you. Uh, I don't really like bringing siege equipment because you don't really have to have it. Um, it can be handy. Check out what happened to this um, to the, uh, this enemy. That is why you don't just charge headlong uh, into a, a missile monk army. You, you'll just get absolutely pwned. The way to beat that kind of army is to attack it from all flanks and uh, to come at it um, randomly and quickly. So it looks like I am going to end up burning down this um, this tower. It's on fire. Hopefully it stays that way. Here's the uh, one of the enemy avatars. Uh, I don't really think these guys are doing a very good job defending the sport, but um, again, I'm not doing a real great job attacking it right now either, so uh, let's get my troops moving. That's actually deep water. I can't move in that water. So I'm going to have to move my troops in this direction. I'm going to keep Patchy um, close to men. The reason why you can see Patchy's armor now is not because CA released a patch, it's because I reset his um, his character traits. And rather than having him just be kind of good at several things, um, I just I completely maxed out the leadership trait with Patchy. And so he does not have a bow, and that's the reason why you can see his armor. So if your general does not carry a bow right now, that's pretty much the only way that you'll be able to see the armor. Well, that's kind of cool. There comes the fire mangonel shots. I'm trying to get rid of this tower. It's at 84% damage. Um, I don't want it shooting arrows for free uh, at my men. Now, it looks like our opponents are, are drawing back, which is kind of smart. But uh, again, you're going to find out why I suggested not bringing matchlock units um, for single tiered forts. And it's because I can simply... Um, that's my mangonel. It's, it's out of ammunition. That's another reason why I don't like to bring these things, is because um, it's now out of ammunition. It caused a little damage to the fort, which was nice. Um, but, you know, for a thousand koku, I don't really find it to be worth it. So that's the reason why I don't typically like to bring um, siege engines. But you all wanted to see it, so I wanted to provide it for you. Yeah, again, I, I, on Patchy's leadership tree, like I said, I reset everything so that um, so that he is uh, now a legendary leader, which means that I have completely maxed out the uh, the leadership trait. Uh, let me zoom in on him again. Hopefully, you can see his armor better. There he is, right behind this mon. Hopefully, when mon goes past, uh, it's not going to go past. Some of you said that you can hold down on the middle mouse button and move the camera around when you're in this mode, but you actually, I cannot, for whatever reason. Yeah, so there's the old patchster. I think he looks pretty darn sweet. Let me get you a little bit closer shot. The last shot I gave you when it was close, uh, we were kind of in bad lighting, but there he is. Got his wings and everything. A lot of the armor he's wearing is actually the armor of Uesegi uh, Kenshin. Um, and he's one of my favorite leaders from the time period, so that's why I dressed him in it. So Patchy is looking as sweet um, as he leads now. Um, and he is, uh, like I said, a legendary leader. Um, the entire army has a morale bonus uh, because of Patchy's presence. Um, and, they're, uh, and some of you uh, may remember in one of the videos I posted, I was kind of curious as to how this Tensar had an Ashigaru army that beat me. Um, I do have, like, the complete leadership tree unlocked. So, um, I mean, Patchy is as good a leader as it comes. And I can absolutely promise you that what happened, because I tried it out. I, I maxed out my leadership traits, I tried it out and took an Ashigaru army and got absolutely pwned. So whatever that guy had, it wasn't just the leadership tree, maybe he had some retainers or something. I wish I could show you the battle again, I can't though because the I didn't save it at the right place and so the file's corrupted, it won't play. Um, if you don't save the game, check out these matchlock uh, samurai, these guys are going to get um, pretty torn up by my archers. See if we can get you some close-up. There is a little bit of lag in the game. Uh, one, of, one of the players must be lagging. Now, he's moving his matchlock back to the walls, and I am in his range. So this is how you deal with that. You immediately pull back. I'm not going to play his game. Not until I've expended every last one of my arrows. So that's why I don't like bringing matchlock units to a single-tiered fort. Um, because of what you're seeing right here, I can just simply retreat back out of the range of his matchlock units, and then they become worthless once again. And then my opponent has Bow Warrior Monks, so he can absolutely um, screw these guys. And then he's also got these Matchlock Monks, and they're absolutely shredding these Bow Ashikaru that are up on the wall. Now part of me wants to just charge in my Katana Samurai, I'm pretty sure I can. Uh, these guys don't have a prayer of stopping me. So I'm going to actually just move up my bows 
to uh, to take cover. Um, again, I, I really don't think these guys have a prayer of defeating us, so I'm just going to run run up here and, and take care of business. I'm going to move Patchy up a little bit. If they start to take shots at him, I am going to have to move him. Uh, matchlock units can kill a general pretty quick. So it's something to be aware of, something to be careful of. Uh, but uh, my teammate over here with the Bow Warrior Monks is just going to pwn these guys. I'm going to attack his general here to kind of throw him off guard. And uh, here you can see my troops crossing the river. And another reason why I'm moving Patchy with my men is because um, he has a uh, fatigue resistance aura. So what that means is that all of the men within the little blue circle, or actually it's quite a large blue circle now, um, they have minimized fatigue resistance. So you can see that all of them are still fresh even though they've been running through this water. And it's because they're in the presence of Patchy. And who wouldn't be happy to be in the presence of Patchy? Uh, of course now I, I would say that Patchy is probably in some some fairly grave danger. I'm going to put my infantry into loose formation because those matchlock monks are about to start firing. Uh, or these matchlock samurai. Uh, now they are pretty deadly units, um, but the thing with matchlock samurai is once I get um, climbing up the walls, their effectiveness is, is going to be completely nullified. Here his general is just taking fire from my archers, and he's shooting at my, um, my archers, and that is a grave waste of ammunition. Again, I want to keep Patchy close, but not too close. Uh, here he's making a run of my archers, actually, so I'm going to actually... I don't really want to run Patchy over there because it's uh, it's quite possible that, um, that he'll get killed by the matchlock fire. So I'm actually just going to tell all my archers to attack this general, and because he's firing in there as well, it's, uh, he may end up killing his own general. I'm going to lose a few men, but I'm um, not too worried about it. You can see he's doing a number on these um, on these samurai units, and I am acting, you know, a little more premature than, than I have to. But I have some darn good troops here, and um, I'm pretty sure that I, I can just get up there and get in the face of my opponent and mess him up. And he's about to lose his general because I am going to go ahead and um, try and run Patchy over here and help. Again, this is a risky move uh, as his matchlock units are firing, and I don't really care about my archers anymore, so. I'll just let him have it. So hopefully Patchy doesn't get killed here by some matchlock fire. But it is very possible. But he is shooting at my samurai. My samurai are now scaling the walls. And these guys are some freaking tough, tough... Oh, come on! Are you serious? I don't know how my general ended up coming out of that. I had like all my men... Look, 23 men left. His general's still alive with five. That's a freaking load of BS. Sorry, Eric gets kind of ticked off when bull crap like that happens. His general comes out of the fort, gets shot at by his own matchlock troops, and doesn't die. And then for some reason mine does. Yeah, that's a big honking load of crap. But, oh well, I'm, I'm in the fort now. These guys are using all their ammo on me. Um, my opponent actually hasn't done as good as he should have. Uh, but oh well. I'm just going to come mix it up with these dudes in melee. The sooner I mix it up with them in melee, the better. I'm just going to command all my units to get back here and, and to get into melee. And if I can just get these guys in melee, this fight will be over. I am going to be suffering a morale detriment, but um, it's not going to be um, too terribly bad, I guess. I mean, I mean, it's bad, but my army's morale is, is pretty good just because I have some, some pretty high quality units. And like I said, if I can just get into a melee fight with this guy, it should pretty much be over. That's, that's the problem with bringing gimmick armies like these guys did. And I'm not worried about these units on the wall. I want to command my units to just run through and get these units to stop firing. Because that's really the only threat. As soon as I get these guys to quit firing and get them into a melee, uh, that's going to be game over. So you can see that I'm now entering melee with all of his matchlock units. And that... Uh, that's one of the ways to defeat matchlock units, is to just just get them locked into a, a melee fight. And so here comes my, uh, my teammate now. This battle ended up being closer than it should have been, just because I wanted to be kind of reckless here, uh, just because our opponents, like I said, chose really stupid armies. And so hopefully I made this a little more interesting by just charging up here. Uh, I definitely would not recommend that on a normal basis. Um, it's a stupid move. But like I said, if you can just keep the matchlock units from firing, then, then it's game over. So that's the problem with the, the gimmick matchlock units. Or I say gimmick, you can use matchlock units properly. It's just that I, I don't think this is a, a real great venue for them. 
I think they're better used like I showed you in those, uh, in those other videos. And you can see why now. So here all of, uh, here's all of uh, the allied troops rushing in. Here's the Bow Warrior Monks. They're going to come up and mix it up in, uh, in a melee. The Bow, yeah, Bow Warrior Monks are there. And let's see what's going on over here. Yeah, my samurai units are infinitely superior to these matchlock units in melee because my guys have four chevrons each. And so they're going to be absolutely screwing these guys up. So maybe you can see some good action there. I uh, hope you enjoyed this live commentary. It didn't turn out exactly the way I'd hoped, but hey, when you're doing live commentaries, you never quite know what you're going to get. And um, you all seem to like siege battles. You wanted to see siege equipment. You wanted to see team battles. You like to see live commentary. So uh, Air gave you everything all at once. So uh, hopefully you enjoy that. Check out those, uh, those Matchlock Samurai getting absolutely cut down by my men. And again, the lag here is not because of my graphics card. Um, it is simply due to the, uh, the internet. So that is game over. Every last enemy has been slaughtered. And uh, the, the, uh, the victory is uh, for Patchy since uh, he was injured in battle. It always says your avatar is injured. They don't die. I don't need to save the replay because I, of course, recorded this one. So let's end the battle and go take a look at the statistics. And let's also have a, a little chat now about what went right and what went wrong. Um, so what went wrong? Our opponents chose terrible armies. You can see that the matchlock armies had a devastating effect as we were coming into the fort. But the problem with the single tiered fort is that the matchlock units don't have any, any level to run to once you get in. And so they're not going to be able to inflict enough damage to rout veteran units. Um, and then as soon as you catch those guys in a melee fight, it's absolutely over. I mean, it's just, it's game over. Those guys suck. Um, I have a, another uh, veteran unit of Lone Sword Ashigaru that I could use. I mean, I have two veteran Lone Swords. These guys are pretty handy because they're cheap. And with the right retainers, they have huge attack. And because of Patchy's leadership skills, um, I now might want some of these. Uh, I'm thinking I'll keep them. See if we can think of a name here, just uh, just just off the cuff. Um, how about uh, sword patches? I don't know if I've already used that one or not. In any case, um, you can see over here on the right it says clan tokens gain and clan influence points gain, and I'm gonna explain that. Here's the results screen. I got the most, or I didn't get the most kills. Is Billy Bob got the most kills, which kind of makes sense because he was probably either shooting the crap out of me or shooting the crap out of this guy right here. Uh, I took the most losses, but I, of course, brought the most troops. Or, I, yeah, I did take the most losses. Let's take a look at some of the statistics here. Now, it's going to show my units and my teammates' units. So here's Patchy. Um, Patchy actually got 40 kills, which is pretty sweet. Um, but I was pretty, pretty fuming angry that he got killed when he did. It seems like that happens to me all the time. I swear other people's avatars can run around with, like, two men left and they'll never die. And when Patchy does die, he dies when there's like 28 men left in the bodyguard. Drives me crazy. Uh, but Patchy never dies. He's just missing an action, kind of like Spartans. Hey, one of my Katana Samurai units just hit level 5. That's pretty awesome. So, let's see. Here's all the statistics. It looks like uh, this Patchy Sword Brother racked up 107 kills. So those guys were definitely fueling the bloodlust. This unit of uh, Lone Sword Ashigaru, my cheap choppy, they got 82 kills, which is pretty good for a Lone Sword unit. Uh, let's see, this is my uh, my teammate's troops, let's see what he got. Some of his bow warrior monks got a lot of kills, but really his army wasn't super effective overall. Um, and you can definitely see that my, my teammate would have totally gotten beat in that match had I not been there with the uh, the melee infantry. However, um, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of ragging on my teammate's army. Um, you can see what your teammate is bringing to the battle, so he might well have been aware that I was bringing a pretty, a pretty infantry heavy army. And uh, he, that's why he may have brought a lot of missile component, was to just be supportive of me. So, you know, it, it definitely could have been part of his plan. 